this movie, I part of me wants to talk so much about it, but I went in very blind, and I feel like that's the best way to see this movie. There's so many twists and turns. You don't know what's happening. So um, I just want to ask, you know, when did you get introduced to this? Like, how did you, um, you know, how did this movie come across your desk? And you said, wait, I need to, I need to look at this one. Well, I uh, met with J.C. Lee about something else, and uh, he uh, asked me to read uh, Loose, and I read it, and I then talked to Julius, and I couldn't stop thinking about uh, the characters, um, not just uh, Harriet, the character that I was uh, uh, thinking about playing, but I kept trying to determine... Uh, or, or see something, see it from everyone else's perspective. And because I couldn't stop thinking about it, I knew I had to do it. Came across my desk for, and um, Octavia's name was right there. And I was like, yes, <laughs> um, I'm always looking for a good scene partner. And, um, and then of course I read it. It was such a quick, easy read. And I went in also not knowing much about it. Um, and it just got under my skin, mm -hmm. yeah. Such a big part of this movie is how badly we want to judge people for better or worse. Mm -hmm. uh, but the addition of knowledge makes it more difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think that is captured so well by this young man, Ke Ke Kelvin Harrison, mm -hmm. who you know has been around, but I hadn't seen that much and just completely uh, gave me goosebumps at almost every single scene. He's extraordinary. He's extraordinary. I actually have seen a lot of his work because I've been at Sundance for the past couple of years and he had multiple films yeah. there for He's the about to years. explode, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> he already has, actually. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, what was it like you know, working alongside the, this really young person who, you know, has such a command over the, um, the space? Yeah, it was impressive. I, I mean, we had... Most of my scenes were with him, and um, I, he had done a lot of prep, and um, it was it was evident. And he just was on top of it all all the way. It's um, it it was great to watch. Mm -hmm. And he had, like you said, he had such a command uh, over the role. Uh, he was impressive. He was a professional, um, and he, if you don't believe him. Yeah. Then our stories don't work. So he he not, he had a lot of work to do, and he 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 did it well. And Julius, the director, is incredible, and you just instantly trust him, mm -hmm. and his vision is very clear. I mean, obviously, it's very vivid on the page as well. But um, I think he the conversations you would have with Julius, I think, just makes you instantly trust him and say, "I'm putty mm -hmm. in your hand. I give over to your." Vision. Yeah. yeah. Um, this, um, aside from this movie, looking back over your careers, um, this is a question that I like to ask a lot of people. Um, is there any project that you've done that you are so particularly proud of, but you feel maybe didn't get the audience that it deserved? Um, I, it would be like a parent choosing a child, honestly. <laughs> so I'm going to say all of them. Look at um, everything. Yeah, <laughs> lots of mine went under the radar. <laughs> um, but I can, I, I can say, um, you know, it's interesting because Mulholland Drive got more attention much later. Like it wasn't necessarily in the at the exact time, but it was very good for me. And um, but there was a film I did called Painted Veil, um, mm -hmm. which was with Edward Norton, and we shot it in southern China in the provinces, and it was kind of a life changing experience for me, just being so far away and in extraordinary places and it was a beautiful story and um, I wished it had been more seen.